Thanks for joining us for what's new in the ArcGIS Online March Update. I'm Peter Klingman. Today I have my trusty crew of field reporters to help me out with this special report. Let's go ahead and get started. There's a ton of new functionality coming in this update, and while we can't get to everything, we'll definitely touch on the highlights. We'll talk 3D mapping improvements, the redesigned user profile page, HTTPS enforcement coming up in December, as well as ArcGIS Experience Builder. Wait, I think I hear my field reporter Jill trying to get through. What's up, Jill? But Peter, what about the party? What party? The beta party, featuring ArcGIS notebooks, the minimalist 4X configurable app, and new ArcGIS dashboards. It's available to anybody with an ArcGIS Online account with content creation privileges. Mark my RSVP as attending. We'll give a quick demo of each beta towards the end of the program, too. For now, let's start with 3D mapping improvements. You can now replace scene layers, making it possible to update the data while maintaining the item ID and URL. No republishing necessary. The updated data will also appear in scenes and apps that use the layer. Speaking of scenes, you can now also drape features above or below integrated mesh layers. To do this, change the elevation mode to relative to scene to place features above or below integrated mesh scene layers. This is especially helpful to event and operations planning workflows, where 2D features need to be quickly visualized in a 3D scene. Great stuff coming from the 3D team. That was Jill Edstrom reporting from the charming small town of Yukaiba, California, where folks still wave to passersby on the street, lawns are the deepest green, cowboys ride horses to bars, and you can count on your neighbor for a pinch of sugar along with a friendly smile. Now to Rebecca Richmond, who's reporting live from, well, honestly, I'm not sure where. Rebecca, want to give us a rundown of the redesigned user profile page? You know it. I'm pumped about this feature because you can now easily see which of your items are the most relevant, as well as their sharing status. The profile automatically showcases your top items. You can also quickly see which groups you're part of. Additionally, My Settings is now divided into four tabs, with useful information available on each tab. An especially noteworthy improvement is that you can download ArcGIS Pro right from the License tab. The redesign does look really good. I totally agree. And it was really interesting for me because I noticed that some of my most popular items were items that were referencing ArcGIS Enterprise services that I added like four years ago. You'll want to make sure those items use HTTPS. As I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, in December 2020, ArcGIS Online will no longer support HTTP. Beginning with the March update, you'll receive notifications when an item uses HTTP. This could be an app, a map, a layer, an image, an MXD or MSD file, or an ArcGIS Enterprise service. Check out the link in the video description to learn more about how you can prepare for this change. That's a great point, Peter. I'll be sure to check my items. Reporting live from the moon, this is Rebecca Richman. I think that's a good plan. Now we'll go to Dave Rasmussen reporting from Charlotte, North Carolina. Dave, want to tell our viewers about ArcGIS Experience Builder? You bet I do. Come on, I think you're gonna love this new builder. She's a beaut. You can use flexible templates and layouts to create single and multi-page apps with interactive widgets. You can bring together data, media, tools and text for your audience that works on any device. If you create a template that you want others to use, you can share it like you would any item in ArcGIS Online. This can save time and improve consistency. I've seen a lot of original and helpful web experiences created already, so I recommend checking this out ASAP to see what you can build. I can't wait to experience it. Your puns aren't as creative as you think they are. That was Dave Rasmussen reporting from Charlotte, North Carolina, where citizens appear to have lost their sense of humor. More on that in our 6 o'clock coverage. Moving on now, let's talk beta programs with the March update. ArcGIS Notebooks Beta brings the ArcGIS API for Python in a Jupyter Notebook environment directly into ArcGIS Online. Just click the Notebooks tab to get started. You can combine code, visualizations and maps, and perform analysis, as well as automate administrative tasks like managing users and content. Pro tip, 
make sure that the Create Notebooks privilege is enabled for publisher-based roles. We'll go back to Jill and Yukaiba now for breaking news on the new version of the Minimalist Configurable app. Thanks, Peter. There is also a new version of the Minimalist Configurable app that uses the ArcGIS API for JavaScript 4X. It has a new configuration experience too, including the default four-step express configuration option. You can create an app in literally 15 seconds. It's a great way to highlight maps created with Map Viewer Beta, which has also undergone a few updates, including some awesome improvements to labeling since the last ArcGIS Online release. Thanks, Jill. Finally, ArcGIS Dashboards Beta will be a few weeks late to the party, but this is something you want to stick around for. Especially exciting is the super fast ArcGIS API for JavaScript 4.x architecture and being able to use arcade expressions in dashboards. That wraps up our rundown of the March ArcGIS Online update. Be sure to stay tuned for what's new blogs and documentation. Thanks so much for tuning in. Reporting live from Redlands, I'm Peter Klingman. And I am Jill Edstrom. I think my neighbors are here. Until next time, ArcGIS Online enthusiasts.